continue to hold off because last week is not not the way I want to do it. So, and just before church, I got a text from my son, and he said it's negative one at his place, and they're expecting five to eight inches of snow. And usually, what happens there today, we get tomorrow. So, I'm. I'm praying that we not get that because I'm not ready for that right now. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I, I just want to say, I, I realize that a lot of you uh, are teaching Sunday school, are doing other things, but everyone ought to listen to what Nikita had to say in Sunday school. And um, I'm going to have to listen again because I believe God used him today to say things that he didn't, I don't think he really expected when he got here today that he would be saying some of the things he said. And that's why I said to him, Nikita, please kind of stay out of my message today. And, and really my message today is what I want to share today is something I don't normally do. And my whole intent was to do this last week. And then God must have seen something different because we ended up with weather like we did. And I, uh, there was no way I wanted any of us to get on the roads. Uh, I don't, it might have been better down here in the valley a little bit, but when you get up in our area, you know, and uh, you, you, could, you could get back and forth easier with a snowmobile than you can with a car. So uh, anyway, but I, I am, I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I, I want to make some statements. I want to share some things. I want to tell you what the Lord began to say to me. Um, I think it was, uh, today is the 27th, so it was about 10 days ago, nine days ago. Um, so, uh, usually our, our usual process is we, uh, we come down and have our coffee and eat breakfast and read, and, and uh, Sister Fran sits in her chair and I sit in my chair and we read. And she said to me, she said, uh, I got something to read to you. And I said, what do you got to read? And she said, I want to read you something that Jeremiah um, uh, posted. And she said, uh, she said, I think you ought to, you ought to read it. And, and I realized she went and used it in the ladies' meeting. So a lot of you ladies have already discussed it and, uh, and been through it. But... I want to read it to everybody, and if you want copies, I, for those of you who don't have Facebook, um, I made some copies, they're, they're up here, and they're for you. But I, I, I really feel that God wanted me to say something, because I, I'm not saying anything, I don't want to say anything negative that makes us feel that we're not doing our job. Are you, are you listening? But I think one of the things, the song we just read, today's the day, now's the hour, and then the statement has been made, Danny got up here and he read out of the book of Acts, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Power is dunamis. It really doesn't mean just making and doing miracles. The greatest miracle that ever happened in your life was that he changes the way you think. That's the greatest miracle God makes is that he takes your concepts, your mindsets, and gets you to see and, and hear things and do things and think the way he does. Are you listening? Probably since the early 90s, it was back in the early 90s when I, um, the, I began to hear Brother Kelly say, this 
statement, and I've said it here at least 500 times, but I'll guarantee you more than half of you here still don't know what I said. That's not negative, it's just how we it is. Wasn't that a good message? Go out the door and don't have a clue what was being said, and we haven't changed. We go out the door and we don't change a thing about the way we, we think. We don't change a thing about the way we live. We don't change a thing about it. We think, oh well, that was good, I'll be there next week. Okay, I've been there, I've done that. But God is beginning to put pressure on right now. Are you all listening? God is putting pressure on right now. And the statement that I've made is over and over again in Habakkuk, in the second chapter of Habakkuk, it says this, and the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will fill all the earth as the waters cover the sea. You tell me what else is in the sea beside water. What's the most important thing in the sea? The water. Because if there wasn't the water, there wouldn't be the sea. Are you listening? But he said the glory of the Lord will cover all the earth. And all of a sudden, I wish I could do it. Hey, JR, come down here. Can you cast that onto the overhead? It's just my page. I don't know. Can you cast it? Just pull it out. It says cast. No, that won't do it, will it? Okay. Okay, that's what I want. I want it right up there. Because, you, you, you know, Nikita went through this whole thing about process, about radio. God. I can remember we had this radio, RCA Victor radio. It was all wood and it was that high. And it sat right outside in the living room, right outside my mom and dad's bedroom door. And I can remember sitting in front of that radio, listening to the Grand Ole Opry. Listen to all that country music. Listen to the hockey games. Listen to baseball. There was nothing when I was a kid like the Detroit Tigers. Are you all listening? But I'll never forget the first time they took me to a ball game. I saw what I was hearing. I literally had a vision, experience of what was going on. And then I got like every one of us, you know, we're all going to do this. If the Patriots win next week, we're all going to jump up and down and say, we won. No, you didn't win. You didn't even play. Are you listening? But this is what Brother Kelly said. When he began to talk about glory, and we got to begin, my God, people, we got to begin to understand what God is trying to say. He said that glory is a wonderful Greek word, doxa. But its root word means to think. It's dakeo. It means to think. It's a mind. It's a thinking. It's what God does. Before God did anything, he thought. It was in his mind. It was in his plan. It was in his pattern. It was in his thinking. So if the God's thinking is covering all the earth, Guess what? And 
And we all think we, the church has no idea. They have no idea what it's going to look like. They have no idea how, how it's going to work. They have no idea what it's going to look like in the end when everybody, we're so used to healing the sick and raising the dead, and if we do that, Because we have no clue what it's going to look like. And that's exactly what Nikita said. Most of us can't even imagine a 90-inch television that rolls up like a window shade. You want to know why? We've never seen one. We haven't experienced it. We haven't seen what it's gone through. There you go. You see all that water? Well, there's South America. There's Central America. There's North America. And we think all there is to the earth is North America. And it didn't really even start there. It started way around on the other side. My son says it this way. There's day and night on the earth all at the same time. There's light and darkness in our thinking all the time, whether we like it or not. But God is looking to bring forth the glory of the Lord in all the earth. And when God puts his finger in something, I heard something the other night that just upset me terribly. I, I was watching PBS. You say, why are you watching that liberal news rag? Well, anyway, it's just one of them things. I was watching PBS, and it was about the Everglades. And it was a historical thing about the Everglades. That was fine. I, you know, I, I just was listening, but I, but I felt a drawing of the spirit to listen. There had to be something in there that God wanted me to listen to. And all of a sudden, there was this seminal woman who ended up being a congresswoman in Florida. And here's what she said. The white man came to North America and ruined everything what God wanted. Because in her mindset, God wanted the Everglades to say the way they were. He didn't want any of the stuff that we see on the face of the planet now. Stop and think a minute. God had purpose. And sometimes I wonder what the purpose is for ever planting a people on a place called the United States. One of the strangest feelings I ever had was two years ago, was it three years ago, two or three years ago, Sister Fran and I went to, we were on our way to Michigan and we decided to take a few days to get there. And we ended up going across the falls. I love the falls. If I've been there once, I've been there a hundred times. But one of the places I had never been, I had never been to Niagara on the lakes, which you get to the falls and you go north about 20 miles and it puts you right up on Lake Ontario. And just on the south side of Niagara on the lakes is a fort. Uh, are, you, are you all listening? There was this fort, and I like forts, and so we decided to do the fort tour. Hear all the stories about whatever, and realize, and all of a sudden, one of the things they pointed out was, right across the river over there, there's a fort right over there. And that fort right over there was full of Frenchmen 
and Indians. And this is what they called us, revolutionaries. Are you all listening? And all of a sudden I realized I was in enemy territory. Have you ever been in enemy territory? I'll never forget one time. One of the first times I went with uh, Kelly and Joanne out to dinner. We were down in North Carolina and we got in his car and we just started the church and we were, when we were meeting down in Chickabee. And I decided to do a thing called a lamb for a house. How many remember that? Been here around long enough to do a lamb for a house. And all of a sudden, before I realized, I thought we were going to have about 20 divorces in the church. And Kelly looked me in the eye and he said, that's because that's where the devil lives. You say, why are you saying all of this? I'm saying because God is about to bring us into a new dimension. God did not start us as a people just here to start a little church called Christ Life Fellowship. There's more to us than what you see because God has made an intention for us. We've lived, most of us here, except for, there might be a few others, I, I, um, Nira, Nikita, and other ones, we're not born here. They came here, they came here to America to become Americans. That's why America was always called the melting pot of the world. When you take everything and put it in a pot and you melt it, you might have all the different spices, all the different stuff that you put in there, but when it's all mixed together, it doesn't come out with the same flavor that it was that it went in. Are, you, are we listening? So I believe that God started America with the right intention. I, I look back, I know some of the history. I'm not going to teach a history book on a thing. But one of the things I realize, our forefathers, one of the very first things they did was they said, in God we, they tr we trust. It's on your money. He didn't say God's plural. He didn't say Allah. He did not say all of these other gods. He didn't say all the gods that the, what we call the Native Americans had, because they had something like 1,500 different gods. Why is it so quiet in here? In God we trust. So our forefathers had a basic foundation. They knew who that God was. His biblical name was Yah or Jesus. That was his biblical name. Are you listening? So he had purpose for what they started. I don't think they had complete vision of what the end result would be like. Are you listening? I don't think they had complete vision of what the end result would be like. But they had a plan. And when it has a godly plan, it always has a godly abundance. He said in his word about the sons of Abraham, say those 
that are in Christ are the sons of Abraham. He said to Abraham, I'll bless them that bless you, and I'll curse them that curse you. Now the purpose was, is if we stayed in the right order of things as Abraham did. Are you all listening? 1,500 years later, 1,400, between 1,400 and 1,500 years later, along came a guy by the name of Moses. And here's Abraham's people because they didn't follow the leadings of their father, ended up for 400 plus years in a place that had 5,000 gods. Because remember when God got a hold of Moses at 80 years old, and he was, where was he? He was up in Midian. Y'all know what Midian means? Strife and confusion. Say, who's ever lived there? Say, God could come and meet you on a mountainside in the midst of strife and confusion. And Moses went down to deliver a people. And Moses said to God, he said, God, who will I say sent me? And he said, you tell him that I am, that I am, that I am sent you. Better translation is this. I was, I am, and I'll become whatever I want. That's God. Are you listening? I heard Nikita say that. He said God can do whatever he wants to do. He can be whatever he wants to be. He can move people around just like he wants. He told Israel, you see all them people that's up there scattered around in that little plot around there that we call Israel? He said, you see all them people? I want you to go up there and run them all out because I'm giving you this land. I promised it to Abraham for an inheritance. Oh no, until the church comes along. No, forever. Are you all right? I'm just trying to make some statements. I haven't even got to my message. I'm trying to get us to a point of thinking because we got to change the way we think. Here's the way we think. Oh, everything's going to be fine as long as I got my job and I got my house and I got my toys and I get my vacations. And, and Nikita said, it isn't all about Disney. There's nothing wrong with Disney. But I want to tell you what, there ain't no Disney in heaven. And that most of you really knew about Disney. Disney was an agnostic. And if you go to Disney, the first thing I ever saw in Disney in 1973, how many ever rode the thing through the haunted house? And when you get to the graveyard, guess who is the first talking head in the graveyard? Walter Disney. It's a sign, beloved. You cannot take all of that stuff. I've tried to say this over and over again. I, my Corvette ain't going with me. God's got a better ride. Are you all listening? But while we're here, God is trying to establish kingdom reality. And I believe he's tried to start it right here in America. Now, none of this stuff has fooled the Lord. He's seen it all. Nothing, nothing sneaks up on God. Not a thing. And God knows how to deal with it. 
but his purpose is a people through whom he can bring his glory. See, we talk about the kingdom. That's ruling and all that. I understand all that. But what kind of rule are you going to have if you can't think like God? And so God is constantly, historically, put things through strife and confusion. And I'm going to tell you, it really started out of control shortly after the Second World War. Because when all the men were off the war, things went kind of crazy in America. Because things got out of order. You had to take the mamas out of the house and put them in the workplace. Okay. And when they get, when men came home from war, you have no idea. War is hell. And nobody knew what to do with people who came home from war. To see the some of the things they went through. And all of a sudden things began to come apart. Not a one of you, maybe Bud and I know Sister Barbara, remember the McCarthy hearings. But I remember what they said about the McCarthy hearings. This is a witch hunt. Well, we got the same thing going on today. Are you all listening? But what's happening is there's more on their side than there is on our side because Nikita covered it tonight, it, today, it's all it's youth, it's a young people, it, there, there's action, there's stuff going on, we're resisting, we're protesting, it looks like everything's going on, oh, oh we got to join up with them. It's like a bunch of ray bones. They will not listen. And what they don't realize behind all of this, it's a demonic force. Because we don't run around at this church chasing demons and devils. That does not mean there isn't any. My thought is this. If you submit yourself to God, the enemy will flee. And the more you submit, the more the enemy flees. So I got to read this. This was on January the 18th. January, today's the 27th, that's nine days ago. Okay? As a nightly dreamer, since the day of my youth, I honestly cannot remember the last time I had a nightmare. That's all, that all changed last night as I woke up in my bed unable to breathe, my heart racing out of control, my entire body numb and shaking. It was a terrifying experience to say the least. I had one night in my lifetime like that. It woke me up, I was choking. And I was being choked by a female spirit. And all of a sudden, I got the words, Jesus, out. Out loud, spoken. You can't think it in your mind. You got to speak it. It's the only way it works. And I said, Jesus, and in my vision, that female spirit went across the congregation, through the front, front of the building, crashed through the glass, and out into the yard. And then I woke up. So I know a little bit about what Jeremiah is saying here. In the dream, I was on a ship. 
with Donald Trump in a swamp that was totally infested with alligators. Many of them were larger than life. However, these were not merely just alligators. They revealed themselves to be mercenary alligators. In other words, they were trained to sink our ship and had no other agenda but doing so. Risking their life was not a problem with, for them. They had been commissioned to sink the ship and kill us. I, I'm reading. This is his dream, not mine. As our ship sailed deeper into the swamp, Donald Trump was laughing with his Make America Great Again hat on as he steered. And he continued to laugh as he had purposely plow into as many alligators as he could. I'm going to drain the swamp, he would yell to me from the front of the ship. Suddenly, I began to realize that the more Donald tried to drain the swamp, the more the swamp was going to drain him. Larger and larger alligators began to swim up and take large chunks out of our ship. And we began to take on water, and I knew then that our death was imminent. Donald seemed to be totally oblivious to the great danger we were in. I pleaded with him to stop intentionally and purposely draining the swamp, but it was too late. We were swallowed up into this totally demonic mercenary alligator abyss. It was a gigantic black hole. I could literally hear the hordes of demons laughing and cheering. What I felt and experienced as Donald and I died together is something I will never forget. I immediately woke up in my bed suffocating, numb, and my heart racing out of my chest. And as I began to pray to get free, this is what the Lord spoke to me and said, Jeremiah, my people do not recognize, who did he say? My people. My people are not Republicans. My people are the people that are called by his name or call upon his name. Are you all right? My people do not recognize the demonic warfare from hell that is being unleashed upon the United States and Donald Trump. Even as a wall is being built, why are my people refusing to build a wall of intercession and prayer around their president and around their nation? Because they're too busy taking care of themselves. That was my statement. Is that all right? I'm going to read that again. Even as a wall is being built, why are my people refusing to build a wall of intercession and a prayer around their president and around their nation? Yes, the borders are unsecured, but they are far more unsecured in spirit realm than you can ever imagine. How is it that a man would see the necessity of building a wall to protect the country but my people cannot even recognize their deep, desperate need to build a wall of intercession and prayer around their own lives and churches. How the American church continues to sleep and slumber in these days of history has come before my throne, and it has greatly grieved my heart. I warn you, Jeremiah, that as Donald tries to drain the swamp, the swamp is going to drain him. 
His heart will become hardened. His resolve will become dangerous. And the attack upon his life and presidency will only get bigger and bigger. This will be, will be a result in a large part due to a prayerless, why is it happening? Due to a prayerless church in America that has refused to pray for their president and has ignored the demonic agenda in Washington. If my people do not begin to gather and call upon my name, great danger will come upon the shores of the United States of America, says God. Now the issue here is not the salvation of America. The issue here is the purpose that God ever started a people and a nation here in the first place. Are you trying to save America? Well, it says this in Timothy. Pray for your kings. Pray for your leaders. Pray for them that you might live a peaceable life. We have no idea what it's like to be under physical and attack. We're under spiritual attack, but we don't see it because we're too busy taking care of ourselves. You, me, all of us. As long as we got our job, pay our bills, and have our houses, and all of that, everything is okay. I chuckled. I heard this statement. The crazy one, Ortiz, whatever her name is, she wants to tax billionaires at 70%. One of the biggest promoters is a guy named Bez, who is the CEO of Amazon, I forget how many billion he makes a year, but this statement was made in the news that if her tax law went through, his first tax bill would be $4.2 billion the first year. And see, we, we just, here, here's what happens. I don't know if you're like me. Here's, here's what happens. We just, we hear all this stuff, and we hear all that garbage, and we hear Pelosi, and we hear all of that stuff, and we think, oh, they're crazy. They're out of their minds. The old lady ought to retire. Da, 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 da. I hear the rhetoric. But how many times do we take it before the Lord and say, that's demonic? That isn't just some crazy old lady. That is a demon talking. Those are demons talking. Because demons say one thing at one time. I'm not being political, but Schumer wanted to build the wall five years ago. Now he's all against it. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Don't think he'll ever get anything from the Lord. It's time, beloved, we begin to get serious about getting on our face and beginning to seek the face of God what is your plan for me in the midst of this? What do you want me to declare? What do you want me to pray about? What do you want me to say? Do you want me to go to the scriptures? We, we read them. I can read 2 Corinthians seven fourteen. You all know it. If my people who are called by my name will humble, 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 it's up themselves and pray and seek my face.
we're only that far away from our government beginning to tax churches for more finance. Are you listening? Do you realize what the tax bill would be for this building, that piece of property, and that house over there? Right now it's, it, right now it's on the books in South Hadley for 1.1 million. Can you imagine what the taxes would be on that? Just property tax. Could you imagine what that we bring in financially every year that it, you had to pay 10 to 15 percent tax on? We got to begin to seek God's face. We got to begin to ask God, what do you want me to do today, not tomorrow? What do you want me to seek his face about? Say, are you afraid? No, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a few little thoughts that I had. What time is it? Yeah, we got a lot going on, but I don't care. We got all day here. I got to give you a few little thoughts. When Sister Fran read that to me, I was sitting in my chair. I was reading. And the first thought I heard in my spirit was Crocodile Dundee. Now, how many remember that old movie? Crocodile Dundee. Now, Crocodile Dundee wasn't much of a crocodile killer. But one of the things they do is when they tackle a crocodile, they get behind them and they grab them and they shut their mouths. And that was the first thing I seen. You got to pray to shut the mouth. Okay. And as I sat there, and began to meditate, I heard the Lord say, swamp people. Now, I only watched that show once, but I know what the whole thing is. It's all them Frenchmen from Louisiana. And what do they do? Right now, I just heard that the, the season's back on right now. They're down there killing alligators. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say to me, don't be afraid, be an alligator killer. I don't mean just shut their mouths. Kill them suckers dead. Because they're going to kill you. And if you let them kill you, Abigail, is it all right if I tell them what you told me yesterday? See this girl right here? She got a good job. She got a good position. She works for a company that used to be called Smith & Wesson. But do you know if you work for her company, you don't put it on your resume that you work for them? because it goes against you and not for you? Do you see which way is going on in the world around us? It's time for us to wake up, church. It's time for us to begin to pray. Because he said, if we humble ourselves, and pray and seek his face. And the whole principle there was is because God had allowed trouble to come because we had, they hadn't been doing their job. Go read Second Chronicles and the seventh chapter. Begin to read it, read it and begin to see what happened with all of those kings. 
I'm going to give you another statement. So as the more I meditated on what Fran had read me here, I only read this once or twice. Because God began to talk to me. And the Lord said to me, don't be afraid. He said, remember Elisha? Remember Elisha? The Syrian army had one million soldiers. And Elisha was camped out in this little city that had like a hundred soldiers in it. Say Christ like fellowship. And so somebody told this the Syrian king, he's over there in this city. Go surround the city. Because if we don't burn him out, we'll starve him out. And all of a sudden, his servant. Now, it, it, it just says his servant. It doesn't say it was the one Gahiz or whatever his name was. Anyway, his servant came to him and said to him, Elisha, he said, don't you know what's going on? They're coming to kill you. He said, they've surrounded the whole city. There's a million of them out there. And God said to, or Elisha said to God, he said, Lord, take him out there and open his eyes. And he went out and he got out where he could see. And he said, all around the Syrian army was the heavenly host. And they were chariots and horses of fire. They weren't there for peace. Say a million against a hundred. Don't seem like a fair fight. But when God's on your side and you cry out, guess what? The whole Syrian army all of a sudden had cataracts and went blind. And as I was meditating on that thought, the next thing the Lord spoke to me, and he said, remember Paul? And I said, uh, what about Paul? And he said, well, remember, they had him before the whole council. And they were bound to determine they were going to find something, they were going to kill Paul. And Paul looked around, and he beheld who was there. And there was a divided camp over there. And so he said, hey guys, I'm the Pharisee of the Pharisees. And the next thing you know, there was war in that camp. And they began to destroy one another. That very day, I was reading Newsmax. That very day, later on, I was reading Newsmax. And Newsmax said, the reason Pelosi and Schumer aren't backing off is because they're afraid of all the new radicals that's over in the Democratic camp. And they're afraid that if they back down and give in, that it'll ruin the Democratic Party forever. Say, demonic. But God has got a way out of it. And the purpose is, is to get a people like you and me with God's mind on the matter and begin to pray and seek his face. I want to read a portion of scripture.
the Lord was taking Ezekiel. I'm in the book of Ezekiel, the 43rd chapter. Just want one verse. I just want to lay the background. The Lord was taking Ezekiel around to show him what a God-ordained house was to be like. Say a God-ordained house. It's a whole process through Ezekiel. Afterward he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looketh towards the east. And behold, the glory of God Israel came from the way of the east. Say God's thinking is on the way. And the reason it says it's from the way of the east is because the eastern gate was the way of the kings. Say the kings. God has picked a company of people to be kings and priests. Say the way of the east is the way of the kings. And the way of the kings is the way of the glory. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. And the visions were like the visions that I saw by the river Kibar, and I fell on my face. Now, if you don't know what the visions were by the river Kibar, you gotta go back and read the first few chapters of the book of Ezekiel. And he saw visions of God. He said visions of God. And it was fourfold. One had a face like a man, one had a face like a lion, one had a face like a calf. Are y'all listening? And the other had a face like an eagle, but they were all one man. God, I, I'm, <coughs> it makes me want to teach and I can't teach. If you don't know what that means, just go back and read the first 10 chapters of the book of Numbers and what it is, it's a picture of all of Israel encamped around the tabernacle. It isn't just the tabernacle. It's the vision of all the encampment around. It's my son. You're right, but Say, God is looking for a people that look like the son. Verse 4. That's the verse I want. And the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate whose prospect is towards the east. I want to read one more verse of scripture and I'm done. Hebrews chapter 2. Say the glory is coming to this house. It's coming through the east gate because there's a people who want the glory. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. I would love to read all of the second chapter, but I can't do it because I'll preach for the next hour and a half. Verse 10, for it became him, talking about Jesus. For it became him from whom are all things and through whom are all things. Say everything came through him. Everything came by him. Everything is for him. Say that was Paul's real vision. That was the mystery that was held from generations. For it became him from whom are all things, by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory. He's doing what? Bringing many sons unto glory. Say God 
is after us for only one purpose, to fulfill his prophecy that the glory of the Lord is to fill all the earth. But first, it's got to fill me. It's got to fill my house, my family, my church, then my neighborhood, and then everything else I'm around. Say it's contagious. Say, Pastor, you're out of your mind. No, I'm out of yours. Because we still want to hold on to some of our old ways. But God will change it. Hey, Danny, how much Polish can you still remember? A bit. But that's not your major language anymore, was it? But where did his folks come from? Poland. And they came here to do what? They melded. I remember where the Polish part of Holy Oak was. They ain't Polish no more. They just tearing the church down. Oh, and by the way, this morning, at 5 o'clock our time, they bombed a Catholic church in Egypt and killed 20 people. Saying, well, it's just a Catholic church. No. Say, there's warfare all around us. It's demonic. But we can win. We're alligator killers. We're swamp people. I wish I could go on, but I... But the purpose of this whole thing is not just about America. It's about the whole creation. Everything in us has got to grow until we produce this glory, this mindset, this thinking. You're right, Tim, that's what it is. Let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. Father, I pray for this house today. As we prepare, Father, today, to partake of the communion table. God, I pray for this house. I pray, God, that this house will take seriously the words spoken over it today. Lord, it will challenge them to spend more time seeking your face in prayer. They'll spend more time, God, declaring the purpose in this house is that the glory of the Lord will fill it. Father, and I pray and I declare over this house, it's time we have another sovereign move of God in this place. A sovereign move beyond our capabilities, God. We just pray for it. But you do it. In Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. Let's gather so we can take communion.